Okay, welcome back to the last video in the series, and this is going to show you um, in quite some detail how I built this setup and how this works. Um, and my hope is that it will show you um, what I think is a really interesting way to use Copernicus or COPS in Houdini. So um, just to reiterate, this image that you see here on the left is one that I imported into Houdini. And um, this one on the right is the render that I'm getting out of Karma. And if I zoom in carefully, you can see um, it's added quite a lot of detail here. We've got a lot of paint buildup. Um, it feels you know, pretty neat. It feels something that feels really tactile and, uh, and interesting. So again, what's happening here is that the image, uh, the geometry that you see, uh, actually, hang on a second. We'll go to process geometry. Now you can see over here on the right, there's this really quite um, messed up, sort of split up, cracked geometry. Um, this is not the geometry that's getting rendered here. Um, basically, it's just a simple plane with a texture map that's getting rendered here. So um, that's what's, uh, I think, really interesting about the system. And I'll try to show you how that works now. Um, so if we imagine um, we started with a plane that looks like this one over here on the left, and we ended up with something that looks like that. Um, so let's go inside our auto trace node and see that's basically what's happening throughout this process here. That grid is coming in. And it's getting broken up in lots of different ways. There's several for each loops within each other here, um, which is why this takes a while to cook. Um, basically, what's happening um, at the beginning of this is that um, Houdini is breaking these up into individual colors, breaking the image up and saying, OK, each one of these blocks is actually an individual color. Um, and then as it goes through this process, it's basically breaking up each one of those. And then any of these that are kind of large, too large for a single paint stroke, there's an additional break up here, which is this Voronoi fracture. Um, that just breaks up the larger pieces. The, um, then the Voronoi fracture in itself is a little bit, um, kind of looks too obviously digital, too much like a, a fracture made for a, like a simulation. So um, there's another VOP here, which distorts those new Voronoi images, uh, edges. So we get something that feels um, a little more organic like uh, somebody made it by hand. There's lots of attributes that get stored on this geometry as it goes through, um, and those create um, very important things that we're going to need in the in the COP setup. So for instance, um, one thing that happens in here, that I can't really show you here exactly, but um, each of these individual broken up pieces um, gets its own texture coordinates. Um, and that's important because that means um, we can use that to drive the strokes in here so that um, they all vary a little bit. So they're all not facing the same direction. There's a little bit of variety of direction of stroke in here. Um, it's actually only a, a variety of about 20 degree rotation, but that seems to be enough to get a nice kind of variation in there, feeling kind of handmade, um, and carefully made. So there's a stash node here, just in case you want to hold on to your geometry, because it does take a while to cook it. I've got it switched off at the moment. Um, and then just looking through here, just there's a lot of, um, just processing that happens. And then this piece of broken up geometry, which you can see here, is sent into COPS. So that is my out to COPS. And this switch here is just controlling what I view over here on my left. And that's controlled on the upper level by that um, simple mode switch. So from here, we're taking this geometry here and we're sending it into COPS. Um, and by sending it into COPS, uh, I don't necessarily mean just sending actual geometry. Um, so if I go inside, inside here to the COPNet, what's actually happening is here is this SOP. That it is loading in a reference to that geometry, but it's not actually rendering uh, or reading those geometry, that geometry, those points. What it's doing is rasterizing them. So there's this rasterized setup here. Um, and basically what we're doing is using uh, the UV space of the object. So basically just a flat projection to take attributes that are on this geometry and bring it into the COP setup here. So that's what's going on here with this rasterized geo node. You can see here, basically what I'm doing is taking in UV space, so basically just a simple UV projection, um, the, uh, an attribute here I call texture chords. Uh, text chords, that's actually a custom attribute I made. That's not some sort of built-in attribute. Um, and you can see in the SOP setup where that gets built in. Um, brings in alpha, and then we bring in class, which again is just the ability for each one of these uh, different pieces here to have its own integer attribute, which can be used um, in a variety of different ways. 
So then basically that all gets processed and then is used to create a few different texture maps. So the most important one is the height map, which you can see here. Um, and that is actually the map that's creating this displacement that's giving us all these nice edges here. And of course, because it's, um, uh, it's basically getting subdivided at render time, uh, you can get tons more off of this um, than you could if you were trying to do this with actual geometry or trying to build up that distortion with actual geometry. Uh, so that's the height map there. Um, then there's um, a bristle map. I'm not actually using this at the moment, but if you wanted to play around with it in your shader, you could. Um, and then this color blending um, uh, map, which I created, and all of these are being used, are being created from this original uh, rasterized geo and from the attributes that are in there. Um, the color blending one is basically what allows me to control uh, with some control uh, to add just a bit of color mixture into this. We can look at that in a second. Basically, again, the, these are just outputting texture maps from COPS that can go into my material. So let's step into the material here inside this matnet, this paint here. So this is the, the shader. And this one is, again, super simple. There's really just two different um, maps that are getting passed into this setup. Um, one is uh, creating the color, the base color, and the other is creating uh, the displacement. I'm not even using um, uh, normals in this, just purely using displacement. Um, so let's kind of walk through the shader here. Um, so let's first of all look at the color. So you can actually import um, uh, uh, the color attribute, the CD attribute, um, off your geometry as it comes in. Um, so actually, that makes me think I should probably step back here just for a second. So we'll go back into COPS, just or sorry, into SOPS and show something here. I think we went through this tree here, and I showed you how we created this distorted uh, geometry here. But I want to make sure we understand that actually what we're rendering out here is not the distorted geometry. It's actually um, this plane here with a lot of texture map on top. So after we created the distorted geometry, which you can see here, which included a lot of color processing to make sure that it doesn't look like a photograph anymore. It looks like individual blotches of color, like paint. Um, I've created that and I've transferred that onto a plane. So basically those colors have come across from that setup onto that plane. And then that plane is going out or that grid or plane is going out to be rendered. So if I go into my matnet here, so basically this is uh, bringing in that, uh, my setup inside uh, Solaris is bringing in um, this object with this color. To, rate, to access the attribute, which we would think of as CD, you actually use this node called Material X Geometry Color, and that's just reading the color off the points. Um, so that alone would be enough to go into the base color here. But what I'm actually doing is bringing in a bit of extra control. So my memory, you might remember I created this uh, texture map, um, which I call Color Blending. You can see it here. This goes into a color correct node. So let's just wire to show you this here. We've got the original color of the object going into this color correct node. And then in this color correct node, there's creating some variations of the hue and saturation. Um, there's one more color correct node, which I think is just taking the saturation down a tiny bit, and that's creating the base color. What this whole thing is doing here is um, using that uh, color blending map that I created earlier uh, as a kind of control in the color, in the, um, color correct. So basically, let me see if I can show you here. If I take this bristle, or sorry, this color blending map and put it straight into the base color, come over here, you can see in a second that it's pretty subtle. Um, there's just a little bit of subtle variation in um, the blacks and whites. If I take the next node in that chain, this remap here, and put that into the base color, um, let's see what that gives us. You can see it's pretty dark now. I've remapped all these values to make them very dark. You can see the sort of very subtle variations of light and dark in there. And I can use that to drive the hue cor color correction, to spin the color here. So for instance, if I would made this remap um, have a bigger range here, like uh, let's say out uh, point negative 0.5 and this to 0.5, um, 
So now we've got a bigger, uh, much higher contrast here. If I now put this back together again, like that. Just a second. Now you can start to see there's a lot of color blending happening in my strokes. Um, and that's because that black and white map is basically telling um, this color correct node to change the hue by that amount in those places. So then if I go back to this remap here, and I change it again and just put it back to uh, what it was, which is maybe 0.2 and 0.2, you'll see that that's a, a much subtler effect now. Um, and basically the same thing happens for the saturation. I can use this uh, Material X remap to mess around with the saturation. Um, and that's really it. The, obviously you can make this uh, displacement effect more or less intense by playing with this uh, displacement value here. Um, you might want to vary that, for instance, if you're trying to look at this, you know, super close up. Um, you probably want this to be subtler. If you were looking at this kind of really close up, that might be too close up. Um, you might want to dial that effect down, or if you're further away, you might want to dial the effect up. Um, play around with the rotation of the light dome, because you can get some very different lighting effects. Let's just try that here for a sec. Um, so this is our uh, light dome, which is lighting this scene. Uh, you can see I've got some uh, rotation on it already. Let's just take that back to like 90. And you can see like the look and feel of those uh, splotches feels quite different now. Let's take it back to negative 40. Um, that looks a lot nicer. Now you're actually seeing those kind of highlights come around there. If I take this to negative 10, um, you can see that effect's now actually maybe too pronounced. So that effect, um, that kind of uh, setting there really impacts the way that feels. Um, I've actually, I've rotated the light dome all the way around in, uh, uh, in Z as well, or sorry, in Y. So if I tweak that, for instance, the um, the light will probably hit it in a different way. So I can take that to there. You can see the other side of these creases is now getting hit by the light. Um, that's kind of nice. Uh, just you can mess around with that and get some really different effects. You can see like these these um, these brush strokes up here are a lot more pronounced than they used to be. Um, so that's quite a nice control there. I think that is it. Um, that has been the five videos to show you um, how stroke it works. Um, like I said, I really hope you have fun with this and mess around. Um, this is, uh, you know, been a, a really fun project for me, but I think what the most fun part of all of this is, is getting it out there in front of a lot of people who can mess around with the system. Um, hopefully understand the way I built it and find ways to change it to make it do what they want. Um, you're more than welcome to do all that stuff and by all means share that stuff with me. Okay, great. Thank you so much. And I'll talk to you soon.